Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here. We all know plenty of smartphones come out every year. Clearly 2015 was no exception to that rule. So this video is your one-stop shop for picking one. This video will hopefully give you all the information you need to be able to confidently sign that contract with a great choice in a smartphone. So of all the smartphones released during 2015, these are gonna be the best in each category. And as I do for the smartphone awards, I'm gonna give you guys a first place, best overall option, but also a second place, also still pretty good, the runner up, and then an honorable mention or two to round it out. So this is the smartphone awards 2015. So first up, we got the top big phones of the year. Now smartphones get seems bigger and bigger every single year and often the top of the line option is huge but only some of them really take advantage of their size. So these are the best big smartphone options right now. Number one is the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. It definitely qualifies as a big phone with a 5.7 inch Quad HD Super AMOLED display and it really takes advantage of all that real estate packing a big battery, big specs, and a bunch of software features that really take advantage of that awesome screen. So love it or hate it, this is one big advantage of a software skin on a phone like this. It's adding a bunch of productivity and fun features that stock Android just doesn't have. So my second place option for best big phone of the year is gonna go to LG's V10. It showed up closer to the end of the year, but it really showed up LG's own G4 as one of the best phones they've ever made. The V10 is rocking a 5.7 inch IPS display, and it's definitely a big phone with big specs. And again, a lot of the features are those similar to Samsung's, short of that stylus, to best take advantage of the extra real estate. And you can see that in the reviews. I'll have all the reviews of all the phones I talk about in this video in the links right below that like button. And I have honorable mentions in the big phones category to the Nexus 6P and the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, both over 5.5 inch displays and both really premium. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have the best compact smartphones of the year. And it seems like a true high-end, but also really compact smartphone is becoming a bit of a rare breed since all these high-end smartphones are getting so big, their more compact counterparts are more low end, but not so with these best choices. So my number one pick for best compact smartphone of the year by these criteria is the iPhone 6S. And it wins this award because it is still a true full no compromises flagship. This is everything that Apple has to offer, all their latest innovations and all their highest end specs. So really, even if Apple does make some sacrifices to get their phone this thin, there's one thing you can't deny and that's the ridiculously fast performance of the new A9 chip. So if speed is your thing, if you want a really fast and relatively compact phone at 4.7 inches, then iPhone 6S is a great bet. And my very close second place for best compact smartphone is gonna go to the Sony Xperia Z5 Compact, because Sony's doing a lot of the same stuff. They're bringing in the high-end features from the Xperia Z5 and Z5 Premium into a much smaller package. All right, the next category for the smartphone awards is the best camera in a smartphone this year. And this is a category that heated up a lot. We got a lot of really good smartphone cameras this year. So the margin between first place and second place and third place, and even fourth, fifth, and sixth is razor thin. So you're probably gonna get a good option no matter which one of these you pick. But my number one pick for best camera in a smartphone is again gonna go to the Samsung Galaxy Note 5. Note 5 has the best point and shoot camera on a smartphone right now by a hair. It's really that fast customizable camera app combined with the razor sharp 16 megapixel photos with that punchy color and solid dynamic range that makes the quality hard to deny. It's also a great 4K video shooter. And you'll find the same optics also in Galaxy S6, S6 Edge, and S6 Edge Plus. So I guess sort of lump those all into this number one placement. I don't know, Samsung over the past couple years has been getting really good at smartphone cameras. Now my number two pick, and again, this is a very close number two, is gonna go to the LG V10. The image quality out of the V10's camera is right up on par with the Note 5. And if you're experienced, you can go right ahead and basically match it with some cases in manual mode. But the V10 camera really shines with its software, which also includes a manual video mode, making this by far and away the best choice for someone looking to shoot a lot of smartphone video. But it doesn't hurt that the auto mode is pretty great too. And I gotta give honorable mentions to these phones I've taken a lot of pictures with, my iPhone 6S Plus and my Nexus 6P, which have some of the best and quickest camera apps in any smartphone and both take very reliable quality photos. And again, the margin of difference between the first and fifth best smartphone cameras is not that big, so you get a good choice either way. All right, next category, best budget smartphone of 2015. And this is a category that again, heated up a lot. Good phones got really cheap. Cheap phones got really good. We saw a lot of quality stuff in the budget department this year to the point where it's actually kind of hard to define what exactly is budget. Is it sub $400 or is it sub $300 only? Either way, there's no doubt about it. In my mind, the number one pick for best budget smartphone 
came over here, it's the OnePlus X. Whatever debate there may be about the amount of a budget smartphone, this one definitely qualifies. It's just 250 bucks off contract, no invite, very inexpensive for the material choices, the build quality, and overall experience this phone manages to deliver. The display is definitely one of its best features. It's the five inch 1080p AMOLED display with those deep blacks and vivid colors, but there's a whole lot more to it as well with metal rails, expandable storage, and the custom OS. Definitely worth checking out that full review. Now, right after that, I have a phone that came in just shy of $400 off contract, which in my book is still budget considering the six, seven, and $800 phones we have on this table. So I'm gonna give that second place to the new Moto X Peer. This is one of the more important phones of the year because of the precedent it set for flagship phones not having to be super expensive. When it came out, it was the highest end phone Motorola made, a legit flagship, high end specs, 21 megapixel camera, and near stock Android with a few Moto extras. But yet it sits on the shelf at a super competitive price. And I think that played a big part as a spark plug for a lot of the budget focused phones we saw come after it. Now rounding out the best budget stuff of the year, I got two more you could consider sort of pseudo budget depending on the way you look at it, but I gotta hand it to the OnePlus 2 and the Nexus 5X. OnePlus 2 was daily driver quality for me for a while with a lot of those custom software features I love and a solid build again at 389 bucks. And the Nexus 5X is your pure stock Android phone, even taking the same camera optics from the higher end Nexus 6P and putting them all in a lightweight $329 package. All right, so the next category in smartphone awards is a new one for this year in 2015, and it's battery life. Best battery life in a smartphone. And I'm adding this specifically because I'm seeing it neglected in the highest end flagships in favor of stuff like thinness and other features we may or may not like or need. So I'm rewarding the ones that don't do that. And my number one pick is gotta go to the Motorola Droid Max. Battery life was the main focus on the Droid Max 2. Moto boasts two days of battery, and while I can't exactly vouch for all that, it is rocking a 3,630 milliamp hour cell. So huge on paper and a legit all day smartphone with that 1080p display and a near stock Android experience. If you're one of those people who demands five and a half hours of screen on time or is constantly using your phone for heavy stuff like navigation or periscope or anything that kills your battery, Max 2. Now I have a second place in the battery life department. That's because after recent Android M updates, Nexus 6P is getting me some of the best battery life I've ever had on a high-end smartphone. I'm getting like near five hours of screen on time now. So that's awesome to see. And I also gotta give a shout out to LG for not coming out with just one, but two high-end smartphones with removable batteries. The LG V10 and the LG G4 both have big removable batteries and that's pretty much the fastest form of quick charge you can have. Now the next category is a little favorite of mine. It's the most improved award for company that improved the most this year. And there's a couple guys I could give this to, but right now the number one most improved, I think by far in my opinion, is BlackBerry again with the BlackBerry Priv. My full review of this one says it all, but it's again by far the best BlackBerry ever and the most competitive one in a long time. It's unfortunately still really expensive and still definitely not for everyone with the version of Android it's running with a whole bunch of its customizations and the slider keyboard, that form factor, but it's I guess refreshing in a weirdly throwback way to see BlackBerry continuing to get better. So now I have a category called the design award and last year I called it like the craziest design. This year I just wanna reward the best design in my opinion. And there's a bunch of smartphones on this table. You may or may not be able to identify most of them by the way they look on the back, but some of them are more striking than others and some of them are more industrial than others. And I gotta reward that. So my favorite right now of this year is the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus. In a sea of black slab phones, not gonna lie, it would be pretty easy for almost any slightly unusual one to stick out, but this one is just pretty. Even if it's not gold, the sloping edges and the display melting over right before the metal rails is dope. I hope we see another Edge phone from Samsung next year. I have runner-ups in this design category to phones that had particularly awesome displays this year on the front of them. First of all, being the Motorola Droid Turbo 2. This guy has a shatterproof display, legit. And yes, I can vouch that it survives real drops. And the other one is the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium rocking a full freaking 4K display. It's super early for these, but when it kicks into full 4K, it looks dope. I made a video all about that screen. Now next up is an award I hate to have to give, but I always will. It's the bust of the year for 2015. The one, I guess the biggest letdown in the smartphone world. And there's a couple again that I could possibly give this to, but the one that stands out is the HTC One A9. Even if we ignore the striking resemblance to a certain Apple flagship, the A9 as a replacement to the HTC One M9 to me is disappointing because it makes it a flagship with a lot of sacrifices. It sacrificed being able to shoot 4K video for a certain chip. It sacrificed the legendary boom sound speakers 
for a home button. I mean, I hate to talk about it for more than I have to, but this was easily the biggest letdown of the year for me, and I'll have my eye on HTC that much more to see next year's phone. So that leaves us with the final category, which is your MVP, the best smartphone of the year, in my opinion. And again, these are very subjective, and I'll have all the reviews to as many of the phones that I'm talking about today as possible in the description right below that like button. But the best phone of the year is the best overall contender, and it's often one that I use for the longest period of time during the year for that exact reason. And my number one choice is the Nexus 6P. I would say my heavy use of this guy hints at my preference for a cleaner build of Android, and this is as clean as it gets. Awesome display, awesome battery life, awesome camera, great performance, great build quality. I mean, this is a complete package from top to bottom. It competes in every category, and it's not even the most expensive one on this list, so it's kind of hard to argue with Nexus 6P. Now my number two in the MVP race is the Galaxy Note 5. And I could have easily given it to the Samsung Galaxy S6 Edge Plus, what a name, but I actually just felt the, the feel in the hand of the Note 5 won me over a little bit, but I used this phone for a while this year as well. Note 5 is also stacked. I'd give it best display on any smartphone, best camera on any smartphone, and some of the best specs available. I'm less of a fan of the software. It's not for everyone, like I said, and this also happens to be a super fingerprint magnet, one of the slipperiest phones of all time, but you know, skin will clean that right up, and I use this phone for a while this year as well. And I got a couple honorable mentions in the MVP race this year, just for a couple of different reasons. First is the Moto X 2015. Like I said earlier, this guy set a precedence for what you can do on a budget. And I, I feel like during the year after this came out, we actually saw more quality budget smartphones start to appear, and competitive pricing for flagships overall now is even more of a big deal. My second honorable mention is the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus. And that's simply because they're the fastest phones I've used this year. Apple, I don't know what exactly you did with that A9 chip, but iOS just flies. I love it. And I can't forget to shout out Microsoft's 950 XL, which was by far and away the best Windows phone choice of this year. And let me know if you guys wanna see a full review of that, but I think that's the pretty easy choice. So there you have it, guys. There was clearly a lot of great smartphones released in 2015, and the choice is there for almost everyone. So whether you need something with a particularly great camera for photos and videos, or you need a really long battery life if you travel a lot, or you need a particularly compact or a large phone, depending on your taste, the choice is there. You'd be kind of hard pressed to go wrong with one of the ones we talked about in this video. So there you have it. And if you know someone who might be in the market for buying a smartphone, you probably want to share this video with them to save you a lot of time and explaining. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.